Okay, so first of all, you have to uh, display edges and uh, also display solid block which is inside the wing and uh, now limit the blocking view. So I will select the corners like uh, these ones. Okay, so let me try with the uh, index control. So. Uh, and also I will be will be limiting the blocking in the y direction as well and uh, so is the case with the z direction so we have and make sure that we have the uh, two blocks and these two blocks are one in the tip section and one is in the main blade section and uh, also the blocks on the back side they are should should also be there so because I want to create the C gate for C gate we need need these blocks and uh, then go back to the split block and uh, then from the sub tab you have to select the ogre generation ogre block and uh, select the blocks and uh, you can use the gloss sign to select all the blocks which are right now visible and then you have to select the faces on which i don't want to have the curvature mesh so they will remain straight so one is this one second is here third one is here and uh, the fourth one is inside okay so uh, we have selected so the the blue color shows that we have selected these faces on the on the blocking okay and uh, what we need is that we need the blocking around the geometry not inside so we need the blocking around the geometry to capture the flow which is in the vicinity of this solid wall okay so around the block and uh, make the offset as the point 0.2 initially and click on apply okay so now this O grid is generated and you can see these additional blocks and uh, you can hide blocks and uh, what I think here is that this O grid size is too much here. So, uh, typically speaking, I would be getting the maybe the if I go for the this thing. So, I would be getting the maybe if the if whatever the the coordinate is right now it's a uh, uh, eight zero five on the bottom side. Okay. So on the on the bottom of wing it's uh, eight zero five. So I would not be getting. Uh, like a more than 10% of uh, this so 10% of this would be equal to the 80 millimeters but uh, I will not do that thing in the calculations like this but I think that the O grid uh, should be limited to the where the bond layer will be so in my guess the bond layer will not be more than this thing it's uh, around 20% but should not be more than this so it should be somehow here okay and it should be moving in this way so little bit higher okay so it should be not more than 20 percent of the of the the base chord length and uh, we can confirm this thing later on but this is my experience which tells me this thing okay okay so uh, now you understand this thing and uh, if I get the distance between the two uh, edges, so I can get the distance by using the move vertices command. And here I have the, although I can, the, the basic purpose of this tool is to adjust the size of the any edge, but you can use this tool to get the length of the any edge, which is currently it has. It's a 1.5 and uh, this is in the meter. So the, the core length is, 0.805 so just give you idea about this uh, thing in the millimeters so it was 805 in the millimeters but right now it is showing the units in the meters so uh, the base core length is base core length is 0.805 meters okay 
So 20% of this thing would be not more than 25% would be 0.2 meters. Okay. So now you can uh, get the idea. So it should be up to here, up to this point. Okay. Okay. So for that, I will be going to the edit block command. And uh, here we have the option. Third number option here is there are two options. One is reset orthogonal uh, orth OGID orthogonality. That is to uh, readjust the OGID once you move the some vertices here and there. And second is rescale OGID. So this is the tool we need here. And choose any diagonal edge. And uh, you can make the offset either in terms of the absolute distance or the relative distance. So if you select the absolute, then you can put the exact value of the that uh, edge and all edges in the OGID in fact. And if, click, if you click on apply, you can see this thing. Okay. And if you undo and uh, just remove this thing and if you make it 0.5, now this is uh, like uh, you're reducing this length by the 50%. So if this is a 1.5, the, the final length will be equal to 0.75. Okay, like this. So I think in this situation, I would be going for uh, the absolute option and that would be the 0.2. And provided that we don't distort the any OGID lines. So just be careful. Sometimes we using this operation may destroy the OGID on the some some parts. So just look for the any issues at all. Okay, so now I will be defining the OGID parameters here. And uh, I think the 20 points, 20 cells here would be enough. So, and uh, there are two sides. You can see here, these two sides represent the two spacings. And uh, how to determine which spacing is which one is very simple. So this one, this side, the, if the any edge has the line like this, and we have the arrow pointing like this you can see here so this side from where the arrow is originating this is the spacing one of on the side number one so this is spacing one so spacing one means a first cell height this is the first node will always be on the on the corner and second node will be over here so this is the first set distance and the ratio is that the how the second cell will be or third cell will be growing from the this cell. So if the first cell height is one, the second cell height would be equal to the one into the ratio. That ratio can be 1.2. So the second cell height would be our second cell distance would be 1.2. And the second uh, spacing would be on the second side of the edge, which is like, for example, in this case is over here. So second side would be here. So the spacing two is over here. So now it's your choice whether you want to define a spacing two or not. It's your choice. But in this case, because we need the more fine mesh here towards the blade wall. So basically we are going to define the sizing on the spacing number two. So you have to sp specify spacing two and ratio two. Okay. This is what we need to define here. And you can leave this side as the free and it will take the input from the whatever the things are. Uh, it takes from the number of cells and the spacing two and ratio two, and it can adjust automatically. Okay, so you can right now see. So uh, now you can see here that uh, uh, I will be defining the first cell height would be because right now, uh, in my point of view, that uh, point two is a now is a is a is. A, Boundary thickness, which will be very, very small than the this one. Let's say is this is the what we right now we are getting here. So I would be dividing this uh, to the 40 cells or 20 cells. Okay. So right, right now the size would be 0 0.01. So I would be roughly dividing this value by the 100 at least. So I would be getting size as a 0.01. This is the, the way I work. Okay. So the first cell height would be equal to 0.001 and the ratio is a 1.115 1, 
and I would be putting the geometric two because this is a size a ratio, a spacing two is specified. So I will be putting the geometric two and it will make the more cells towards the billet surface and apply. You can see this thing. And uh, you can also see that we have the very large cell here. So uh, that can be corrected by defining the more nodes and so that we can have the more nodes in the remaining space. Still we have the problem then you can go with the 40 cells. Okay. And uh, you can also see that the spacing one is defined automatically, which is 0 0.027 and ratio two is 0 0.86. And uh, although we define the ratio two as a 1.15, but by software it is calculated as to be the 1.15938. Okay. So apply and uh, now you can check the pre-mesh. And also display the symmetry plane where we can see this mesh. Okay, so now you can see that the how this is created and also I want to take a look on the uh, mesh from inside. For that you have to right click on the on the pre mesh and then click on scan planes and uh, select this edge and you can get the view from inside and you can also hide edges so that you can have the better view of the mesh and this is how the mesh will look like and uh, if you want you can also uh, select the edge over here and this will give you a second view. So uh, if I change the colors and for this, let's say I, def I choose the color to be the yellow. Okay, so you can hide the edges. So you can see uh, how this is capturing the this uh, tip region with the curvature. You can clearly see here. And also the trailing edge, how this is captured here, but only problem we, we have is the, uh, these corners. So this will be solved with another O-gate that is only for the trailing edge region.